Hi, Trey. Good morning. Um, we're, we're at the tail end here of graphing sine and cosine. We handled all the, the basic stuff, if you want to think of it that way. We have a period change, um, the slinking on and out. We have uh, vertical shifts, that's up and down. We have amplitude change, that's where we stretch it vertically. Um, and we've even handled phase changes, that's taking the whole thing and sliding it left or right. But what we haven't done, and what we're going to do in this video, is to combine two ideas. That's a changing the period and phase shift. It's not as um, cut and dry as you might think. So without further ado, um, let's look at something real quick. Okay, so I'm going to open up a... Desmos. This is all spur of the moment. I wasn't going to do this until I thought of it just now. Let's let's look at this. A quick a quick remember this. Um, y equals. Let's just do how about the square root of x. This is what y equals the square root of x looks like. Um, if I put a two in front of it, it stays the same. We're, we're actually just compressing it a little bit, and it comes up. Um, if I put a minus 4 in front of it, okay, we're, that's our phase change. A minus sign will move these things to the right. If I made it a plus 4, it moves it to the left. Four units all is well and good. But look what happens now when I combine these two. If I say y equals 2x, there's y equals 2x, and I put a minus 4 next to it, we might think, okay, minus 4 meant to the right four units. But it doesn't. This graph only moves two units, but wait a second, I put a minus four right there. What's happening? Well, I'm compressing this thing at the same time, and I'm moving this thing. So it, it's not as cut and dry as what's just happening to the x-coordinate. If I knew what the only thing happening to the x-coordinate was this minus four, then yeah, I move it to the right four units. But by adding this little compression, and for our purposes, that will be a period change, we're effectively shrinking um, that distance that we're moving as well. That, that four units, we're not actually just moving four units. And here's what's really happening. If I can factor, if I can just tell what's just happening to the x, um, one thing at a time, like up here, there's two things going on. If I can factor a two off of this, y equals the square root of two, parentheses, right, if I factored a two off, I would get x minus two. They are the same thing. And now I can tell and look at it, oh, this minus two right here, that's what I'm just subtracting off of the x. So that's actually how many units to the right I'm moving this thing. And it is how many units to the right. These are the same thing, by the way. The top one and the bottom are the same. Um, it's just how they're written. This one has a mixture of um, shifting stuff to the right and compressing stuff, um, where this one goes one at a time with it, where I'm just moving them to the right, and then I'm compressing them. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so hopefully that for the moment thing didn't confuse us too much. If it did, pretend like I didn't even say anything, okay? So let's get right to it. Here's some notes for you to very sequential notes today. What to do step by step to make this happen. So 4-5, continue how to graph when there is a phase change and a period change. Um, so we're talking about in general, y equals the sine, that would be a sine of bx plus b plus c. We could do the vertical shift. And we can do the amplitude changes. That's up and down stuff. That, that's affecting the y coordinates. But this stuff here is only affecting the x coordinates. So um, that's kind of why I omitted A and B there. So let's just jump right into um, an example problem. It says to graph one period of y equals sine of pi x minus pi over 4. Now a couple things of note here. The first one it is noticing that, that something's awry. Something's different. I have to attack this some other way. Okay, because there is a period change, there's something being multiplied out in front of the x, and there's a phase change, there's something being subtracted or added to the x, we are going to have to go through these steps. Okay, I cannot just look at this, this is the second point of interest, I cannot just look at this and say, oh, the phase change is pi over 4 to the right. We just went over that on that little Desmos activity. It's not. With the way this is written, we're multiplying these things by pi, and we're subtracting these, this thing from the x, this pi over 4, so we need to effectively figure out what the real phase shift is. And we had a formula for that from our little Desmos activity. The uh, formula for phase shift, to find the phase shift, is C divided by B. And I'll show you where that comes from in a second. Okay, so um, let's graph one period of this. Step one is just like step one of all the other sines and cosines we've done. We have to find the period, and we have to find what our key x values would be by breaking it up into four. That was the half of that. Half of that, three of those little games. Okay, so um, to find the period, 
I look at b. It's 2 pi over b. All right, 2 pi over pi, 2 pi over pi is just 2. That's the period. Piece of cake. Okay. Then I have to break that up into fourths. So I would take half of 2, 1. Half of 1, a half. And then three of those. 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves. I've effectively broken it up into fourths. We have our zero, our starting point. Those are our five points to graph one period of this thing. Normally. Okay. Then we learned about the phase shift. That was like the second part of our, our notes when we were doing this stuff. And that was to adjust all of these key values, these key x values, by whatever the phase shift is. And this is where students go wrong. Students see this minus pi over 4 and think, OK, I'm going to add pi over 4 to each one of my key values. And now you're having to do like a half plus pi over 4, and you're getting nonsense. You're not being able to take the sign of it because it's not on one of those cardinal directions, which I promised it always would be. That's because that's not the real phase shift. We have to find the real phase shift. To find the real phase shift, we are factoring off, just like I did on that little Desmos a second ago, we have to factor a B off of both of these no matter what. And I say no matter what because sometimes, you hopefully you saw in the bell work, you, you factor things off that aren't divisible by that value. And that's okay. You have to get rid of this B. We have to see what's just happening to the X. What am I subtracting just off of the X? So in this case, we factor a b off of both of these. If I factor a b off of both of those, it would look like this. Taking this GCF, they both have a pi. I'm factoring it to the outside of some parentheses. And right there, there's our real phase shift, uh, minus one-fourth. So that would be to the right one-fourth. And then that's how much I'm going to adjust all my key x values by. These key x values we got, I'm going to add one-fourth to each of them. Um, if we think about for a second before, for, before I keep going, our formula for finding the real phase shift was C over B. Well, when you factor, you're doing division. When, when, you, when we factor a pi off of this, GCF, we are dividing this by a pi. We're dividing this by a pi. And that pi that I divided off of both of them, I'm multiplying out front. So it's one of those things that if, if you add to, you subtract to. If you um, divide by pi, you multiply by pi. So effectively, when we're factoring a pi off of these, both of these, we're taking this and saying, whatever this is, I'm going to have to factor it off of this by dividing C over B. That would be C. I'm dividing by B. That's where that formula comes from. We get our real phase shift. And now we're going to adjust all of our X values. So that 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and 2. I need to adjust all of them by adding, doing the opposite, adding 1 fourth to each of them. When I do that, I get my real x values, if you want to think of it that way. The x values I'm actually going to graph, that would be these. And we can do some pattern recognition with this. Hopefully you see that this would be 1 fourth. 0 plus 1 fourth is 1 fourth. 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 4 fourths plus 1 fourth is 5 fourths. Okay, so 1 fourth, 3 fourths, 5 fourths. Um, it's odd multiples of a fourth here. So. One fourth, three fourths, five fourths, seven fourths, nine fourths. Yes, it is. Those are our key x values. Now we can plug those in one at a time. And we get to the question here. We actually will have two different equations. We have y equals the sine of this bad boy. And we have y equals the sine of this bad boy. They're the same thing. This one, just like in the Desmos thing, this one where the pi is attached to both of them, and this one where the pi is apart from both of them, say the exact same thing. So when we plug these values back in, you pick whichever one makes the most sense to you. I prefer this one just because, I don't know why because, I like it better, I guess. How about that? So um, we plug them in. We, we can plug in a couple if you would like. Let's plug in one-fourth was our first one, okay? So I'm plugging in one-fourth. One-fourth minus one-fourth, zero. Zero times pi, zero. The sine of zero, zero. Awesome. So I started by plugging in a one-fourth, it eventually kicked out a zero, and that's my first point. Zero. Okay. We can plug in one more, and we'll, we'll call it good. Three-fourths. Three-fourths minus one-fourth is two-fourths. Two-fourths is one-half. One-half times pi is a half pi. It's pi over two. The sine of pi over two, sine of pi over two is 90 degrees. That's up. It's one. So that's why I got three-fourths comma one. Finish by plugging in the rest of those values, or by knowing how sine works. Sine works by doing, with a positive, a node, a maximum, a node, a minimum, a node. Just keep bouncing back and forth between uh, whatever our a value is in this case. 
up to a one down to a negative one. Okay. So let's wrap this up real quick. That, that's it. That's our one example. I saved the, the toughest. There's a lot of steps to it. I get that. Here, here's the big thing. The phase change is not what's just always being added or subtracted to our x. The phase change will always be c over b. Um, in this case, if I was going to do c over b, what is the phase change for this graph? Think about it for a second. Hmm. C over B, B2. And because it's a minus, it's to the right. Phase change for this one would be 2, to the right. If I was going to graph them, I would find my key values, and then I would add 2 to all of them, the opposite of it. And then I would plug them in. Here's your guys' stamp. The last part of the stamp, we now should be masters, well, close to masters, of graphing sine and cosine. Um, it will say to use a graphing utility. I obviously don't want you to do that. I want you guys to do these by hand. Start to be able to speak sinusoidal graphs. We have to be able to do these on our own before we can start using the benefits of graphing software. So page 412, 61 through 67 odd. Um, do your best with it. Be emailing me questions and moving on.